All right, let's uh, get started. So today we will mostly talk about swapping. Um, before that, let's do a quick recap of what we talked about last time. Um, we talked about the uh, <coughs> page table design alternatives. So one option is I see a lot of people using uh, is the linked list option where you have one linked list node per virtual to physical page mapping. Right? So um, I see also different uh, styles of linked list. So somebody, somebody may have a global linked list per address space. We have, you have one linked list for each address space. Some others may have a linked list per region. So I saw people doing um, multiple linked list where you have, he have one linked list per region for code segment, code data segment uh, for data segment, segment. Both options are okay. As long as you are comfortable with those uh, linked list manipulation operations. <clears throat> and uh, so this is the linked list design option. We talk about the advantages and the disadvantages, disadvantages of this uh, approach. Basically, it's linked list. Everybody is familiar with linked list. So you do a lot of linked list operations in the data structure course. The, the disadvantage, of course, is the query time where each time you want to get a virtual to physical mapping, the worst case is you have to traverse all in the entire linked list. And we also talk about the uh, page table design. So this is the second uh, option where you use multiple level page tables. Um, so this is the most classical way of doing this, but so far I haven't, I haven't seen people using this option yet. Perhaps, perhaps the linked list option is too, too simple to use. Uh, again, the advantage of this approach is that w no matter what virtual address you are querying, you always have constant time, lookup time of the uh, page table. And all, of course, the disadvantage will be that the two level page tables may sometimes be too complex to um, deal with. So we, uh, we talk, briefly talk about the address space design. So this is a view of the user's virtual address from zero up to two gigabyte, uh, the OX at a median value. So the user may have a code segment, data segment, and heap. So that they are most programs will have these two segments. And uh, some, some user program may use malloc. In that case, that user uh, program has one more region called heap which is variable, uh, which has a variable size. And every program has a stack segment which starts from the top of the user address space and grow downwards. So those heap and stack are two special segments in the sense that the size can change. Our other segments like code and data, uh, the size are fixed. They are, you know the size by ASD5 region, um, the function. Uh, also, for each segment, may, each segment may have different uh, permissions. So, for example, for example, the code segment is read-only, but also have a permission called the executable. The data segment is usually read and writable. So, of course, heap and stack are read and writable. So, you want to read. Um, remember that re permission information somewhere in your address space. So later on, when you have a VM fault, you can query the, uh, the permission information to know whether or not the user program has permission to write or read this segment. So finally, we talk about the TLB. So what's the TLB in this uh, MIPS architecture looks like? So TLB is basically a hardware map where it translates the virtual uh, page number which is up higher 20 bit of the virtual address to the physical page number, which is a higher 20 bit of the physical address. It also has some other flags that determine uh, what, it, what the user program can do about this page or can, can do about this TLB entry. So we have a valid bit flag, which indicate whether or not this TLB entry contains a valid translation. We have a 30 bit so as we said, the 30 bit is not, not actually uh, a flag indicate whether, page is, whether this page is dirty or not. It's actually a flag that determine 
if the user program can write to the page. So whenever the CPU got an instruction, say, write to this memory location, the CPU query the TLB entry and gets the physical, page, page, physical address. The CPU will also look at this bit, say, if this bit is 0, then the CPU will throw a, a VM fault a virtual memory exception, saying that the TLB entry says that this page is not writable. But now the user tried to write to this page. So the hardware doesn't know what to do. What the hardware does is through a, a virtual memory exception so that you can handle this. Uh, so this bit determines that whether or not user can write to that. You may wonder that why do we want to have uh, that, this flag? Why do we want to protect uh, the app page so that the user cannot write to it? Any ideas on this? So why, do, why does the hardware provide such a, a functionality called 30-bit to determine uh, whether or not a user program can write to this page? Nobody? What's that? Avoid checking the page. How? Uh, you mean clear the bid so that user cannot write to it? So, so my question is, why don't just uh, allow write operation by default? Yeah, that's one reason. We want to enforce the permission, right? So for some um, segment, like uh, the code segment, the permission is read only. So we don't want the user to write to that segment. And if user does write to that, we want to know. That's why we tell the hardware that user cannot write to this. If it writes, raise an exception, let me know. I will handle it inside of VM fault. That's one reason. And some uh, other times, you will, set, you will see code that also set the data segment to be read only in the TLB entry. So what's the reason for that? For the code segment, we want to enforce the correctness. We don't want user to modify the code segment. For data segment, sometimes you may also want to set the 30-bit to be 0, meaning that you don't want the user program to write to that segment or write to the page. Yeah. Yes, that's, uh, that's another reason, actually. So sometimes you don't want to, the user to write to it, but the user actually has permission to write to that page. You just want to know when you start writing so that you can duplicate the page. And the other reason I'm trying to get to is that when you do swapping, it, you may find it handy to differentiate the clean pages and the dirty pages. Clean means that this page, the content of this page, uh, first of all, this page has a copy in disk. Second, the content of these two copies, one in memory and one in disk, are the same, identical. That means that this page, the memory, has a backup copy in disk. In this case, the page's data is clean. Uh, clean in the sense that, so later on, for example, if you uh, wanted to swap out this page, it means you don't actually need to write the page content to disk because the page already has a copy in disk. Right? But if this page is writable, then user may modify the content of the page in memory. Then the, 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 the page content will be different, the copy in disk and the copy in memory. In that case, the page state we say is dirty. Dirty in the sense that the page content in memory is different with disk. So later on, if you choose to swap out that page, you actually need to write the content to disk. So that's dirty pages, and that's clean pages. So in swapping, so first you scan the call map entry and find out you run out of physical pages. So you, de you, de you decide to pick a page and swap that page out. And what you prefer is a clean page because you can just discard the page content and you know that there is some copy in disk that has the content. Right? So you save a disk I.O. So you always prefer the clean pages first. Then you, uh, if you have no clean pages, every page is dirty, then you really have to swap out some page. So, so how do you know a page is clean? Or, so you know a page is clean when you just flush out that page, just write that page to disk. But how do you, when do you, how do you know when the page becomes dirty? Right? 
you cannot just read the content from a disk and do the byte differentiation difference comparison. So the way you do it is that you set this page to be read-only. Even though it's a data segment page, it should be writable, but you still set it to read-only. So when the user try to, once the user tries to write this page, you get an exception. And you carry the page table and figure out this is the right, or uh, this is the data segment. The user has write permission, but the page data is clean. So what you do is that you mark that page as dirty because user is going to modify the content of the page. And then you set the TLB, uh, TLB entry bit 30 to 1 to enable this write. So that's, so we uh, basically list the three usage of this 30 bit. One is to enforce the correctness. We don't want the user to write to code segment. And the second usage is the copy and write. So we want to know when users start writing some page, if that page is copy and write, we, at this point, we want to make the duplication. And then the third usage is that you want to protect the clean pages, right? So when, when the user tries to write to, to that page, at that point, you know that page is no longer clean. Its, uh, the, its content is being modified. And you need to mark it dirty, so later on, you cannot just discard the content. You have to actually flush that page to disk. And finally, there is a no catch bit which you don't need to care. Just uh, I think the default one is, is one when you make up TLB, TLB entry. Is that correct? So this bit you don't need to pay any touch attention with. I think uh, the default value is one and that'll be fine. So any questions? Yeah. What's that? Are there any tests in the autograder uh, that would involve a process allocating more than 64 pages? 64 pages? Yeah, so it, it would fill up the TLB, but I Yes. <laughs> well, any reasonable user program will use more than that. So you only have a limited number of TLB entries, but you have more pages than that, which means that sometimes you will always get a TLB fault. So you need to kick out some TLB entry and, uh, and plug in the correct value. Later on, when the user actually access the previous page where you kick out the TLB entry, there, is, there will be no translation for that. So you have a TLB fault again. That's why we say that there is a difference of TLB fault and page fault. A TLB fault is not necessarily a page fault. It's, it may be that the page is already there. there is only, it's just that there is no TLB mappings for it. See, so in that case, you have a TLB fault, but you don't have patch fault. So any, any user program is going to fall? Not any. Uh, Bing true Bing false clearly doesn't use that much. Okay. But parallel VM and uh, some other huge, for example, may use up more than that. Yeah. So, in, um, so here, there are two actually algorithms-related policy here. One is a swapping policy which page you need to swap, you choose to swap out, right? You can use some list of recent use, random first in, first out algorithm. So another um, similar algorithm here is which TLB entry do you choose to use, right? When you want to plug in some values. So ideally, you want to find that available TLB entry. So you, you don't need to kick out any TLB entries. That'd be perfect. But in some cases, you, find, you will find all the TLB entries are being used. So in that case, which TLB entry do you need to, do you choose to kick out or invalidate? Do you plug your values in there? There is also uh, some, you can also do some algorithm on this. For example, do first in, first out, do random, do have some kind of tracking information to know when is the last time this page is accessed. But for this assignment, I would suggest you for both policies, uh, start with random first because it's simple and it works. Just uh, when, whenever you want to kick out a page or you want to kick out a TLB entry, just randomly choose one. And if this works, then you can, you, and if you have time and you want to, you can implement some other algorithm. But use random as the best line and Im use that first. That's, yeah. Well, you first want to find the available TLB entry. If you have to kick out some TLB entry, then you use random. Right? It doesn't make sense to use random at the very beginning, right? because you know you all have entries to use. Yeah. Any other questions? 
So this is the address space related uh, material. Um, so today, we will mostly talk about swapping, especially we want to have a very clear picture of what's the state of the, of the virtual and the physical page and what it means in to, for a page to in each state and how does the page trans, trans, um, uh, transit to, from one state to another state. So then we will talk about the process of swap out a page and also a process of swapping a page. So before you do anything uh, swapping related stuff, you want to make sure that you pass all the tests that do not require uh, swapping. So this is a list of the tests that the autoweather will run with uh, this many RAM size. So you want to make sure that uh, check your SIS161 configuration and set the RAM size to be exactly that, that much. And I don't remember exactly how many CPU cores are there. Four, two? For all the test cases? Okay, for all the test cases, two cores, this many uh, memory size, and run this test. Make sure you can pass this before you uh, move on to do swapping. Otherwise, if there is some bug, you want to find that early on. Instead of later on, when you involve swapping, you have so many variables, you don't know where the bug is, uh, is probably from. So you want to do one step at a time. At the very least, you should pass the core map test, which is CAM1 and CAM2, to make sure that your core map is solid. And you want to run that KM1 and KM2 multiple times within one kernel session. So you start with the kernel, you run KM1, you run KM1 again and again, then you run KM2 and again and again, and so on. So you shouldn't have any memory leaks. And you should be able to run KM1 and KM2 multiple times without exiting the kernel. So that way you know the core map is solid. Is, uh, you can rely on that. Then you move on to the basic user programs like being true, being false. You run shell, you run being true, being false multiple times to make sure it's okay. Remember, we, you, you only have 500 kilobytes there. So if you have some memory leak where, or you fail to uh, clean up all those pages, you will have problems. So doing that help you um, spot the problems early on instead of leave it to the later stages. Then you want to do malloc test, which basically you need to implement as break syscall, right? Um, again, you only have 512 kilobytes of memory. Make sure you can run that multiple times. And the same applies to radical, radical, and crash. So you also have some assignment three specific test cases. Excuse me. Um, for example, matrix, multiplication, sort, and huge. These are meant to be memory ex uh, extensive uh, memory intensive and also CPU intensive. And some of them may use multiple threads like fork test and triple mat uh, matrix multiplica multiplication. So that's the, that's the test case. And make sure you can run this without any problem before you, before you do swapping. Any questions on the test cases? Yeah, the parallel VM one may be tricky because you only have two megabytes of memory where you have to spawn like 20 or so thread. So if you uh, don't, uh, you, if you don't uh, make your thread structure efficiently, you may have some problem that you will not be able to run parallel VM with two megabytes of memory. And if you, um, so first try to um, strip down any unnecessary data structures like if your file table is too large and all that. If you don't, um, if you try it very hard and cannot run parallel VM in two megabytes memory, then try to enlarge the memory to like four megabytes. Make sure you can run that multiple times. Then you can move on to uh, swapping because with swapping, this problem will go away. Whenever you run out of memory, you always have to swap some, some, uh, some patch and uh, you don't have any memory issue, memory limit issue. Any questions on the test cases? So which test have you been able to run? Which one, who can run all of them? No one? 
well, well, at least CAM2. That's everybody, right? And what about bin 2 bin 4 the basic one? No? <laughs> For that, you need a, a pretty decent address space. So bin 2 bin 4 is not a, that easy, actually. You need AS create, AS define region, AS copy, AS activate, and all that function. And also, you need a page table. And also, you need a region information. And also, you need a, a VM4 handler to be able to, be able to run bin 2 bin 4 um, so these are the test cases. So, so in the very first uh, recitations about the physical page management, we briefly mentioned the state. So now, without without every with, with sorry with everything, with user address space, with swapping, let's see what uh, what state can a physical page be. So when you initialize your com app in VM Bootstrap, you know that there will be only two states whether either is fixed or being used by the earlier um, camera logs or kernels. So the very first few pages will be occupied. In this case, we call it the fixed, right? And then all pages beyond that will be free, right? So at this point in VM Bootstrap, you only have two, pa two possible page state, used or not, or not used. Used is, mean, is fixed here because you cannot swap it. So we, we, or you can call it a pinned. It's pinned to to memory. So we, uh, if we, we don't have any user uh, program running, we only have kernel when you run cam one, cam cam two. That will be the case. So a free page can become a fixed page when you call allocate k pages and you return that pages. Or fixed pages can be become free when you call free k pages on it. It's very simple. It's only free and fixed, and the page that can. Um, move between these two, right? When, once you have user, address, user program and user address space, things become, becomes complicated. So inside of VM fault, you get a patch fault. You realize that you need, to allocate a map, you, you, you need to allocate a physical page. Once you allocate that, what's the state of the physical page? Here, we're talking about the physical page. So the state should go into your core map entry, right? physical page. So the page, the state of that page will be one of this. Well, at least if you, at this point, if you merge these two into one, you can call it used by user program, right? If you don't consider swapping yet. But at this point, we really want to consider swapping. So with swapping, what's the state of the first allocated page, physical page? Yeah, we talk about dirty and clean. Dirty means that this page Two cases. Either this page doesn't have a copy in disk, which is the case when we first allocate it, or the page content, or this page has a copy in disk, but the content is different. Both cases means that this page is dirty, right? So when you first allocate the page, the page data is dirty. Then later on, when you, when you try to swap out that page, you need to write the page content to disk, right? After you do that, the page will have a copy in disk, and the copy's content is the same. At that point, the page's content is clean, right? Clean means that, yeah, so we already said what clean means. But so later on, when you swap, either you swap out or you flush. So say you have a flush function which periodically flush the content to disk. So when you have VM faults, you can save a few disk IOs. What if the user write to that page again, right? When you swap out, you, need, you know that you have to set the TRB 30 bit of that TRB entry to be zero. So that when user write to that page, you, you would know and you would mark the page content, page state to be dirty, right? So this is the translation between the dirty and clean. How does the dirty becomes clean? Either you flush or you swap out. How does the clean page become a dirty page? Well, that's because you you the right to that page, and you want to um, remember that state somewhere in your com app. And finally, when you destroy your address space, uh, either these dirty or um, clean pages can become free again. You are not nobody is using that. So, free is uh, simple to understand. Fixed meaning that it's used by the kernel. Dirty or clean mean that it's used by the user. And the, the, the state indicate whether this page has a copy on disk 
and uh, or not. And the difference of dirty and clean is that when you want to swap out the page, you, it determines where, whether or not you need to write the page content to disk. So these are the state of the physical pages. And t let's take a look at what's the state of the virtual pages. So of course, physical page state go in, goes into comma entries. And virtual page state goes into where? The page table entry, right? Page table is corresponding to virtual pages. So this is your address space. This is the regions you have. And initially, so uh, when you call AS create and you call AS lot f, we call AS define region to define different regions. Right after AS define region, every virtual page state is what? Is uh, unmapped, right? At that point, the virtual pages are only virtual. There is no physical pages corresponding to that virtual page, right? So that, at that point, the page state is unmapped. Then user program starts running and will trigger page fault on those vir pa uh, virtual addresses. You, uh, in VM for the handler, you realize you need to allocate the page. So you allocate the physical page and set up the page table entry. So at that point, the virtual page becomes mapped meaning that this page corresponding to some page on, in the memory, right? And then later on, so when some other process have a page fault, you realize you don't have enough physical pages to use. You determine to swap out that page. At that, at that point, what's the state of that virtual page? Well, it's, it's still corresponding to some page, just that the page is no longer in memory. It's in disk now. So the, now the page, the virtual page state is swapped. Right? And later on, when the original process accesses this page again, you will have another page fault or uh, TLB fault, and you will swap that page back in. At that point, the page, the virtual page again corresponding to some physical pages. So it be, becomes mapped again. So this is the trans transition of the state of the virtual pages. Right? This going to your um, page table entry. Any questions on the physical and the virtual pages state transition? It's very important to understand this so that you don't get lost in the, all those uh, gory details. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's how you determine whether or not it's a page fault or not. So here, here, here's the thing. So you have a VM fault, and inside VM fault, how do you know whether or not you need to allocate a page? Yeah, that's because you're using link list. That's, that's right. Uh, in that case, mapped meaning that you have a page table entry for that. Unmapped meaning that you don't have a page. Well, in that case, a page will still have two state, unmapped and mapped. Just that the format of, or the, of the state is different. In my case, I may use some flag to indicate because I'm using two-level page tables, I may use some flag to indicate whether or not this page is mapped or not. And if you're using link list, well, the, the existence of the uh, link list node for this virtual page is an indication of whether or not this virtual page is mapped. Right. You, you are right. You, if you're using link list, you don't have to explicitly store the mapped and mapped information. That information is already um, uh, stored by the existence of the um, page table node for that virtual page. But you do need um, to store mapped and swapped information. So that in, in both cases, you will have a linked list node for that virtual page. Then you will need to figure out where do I actually find this page, whether in memory or in disk, right? In memory, you want to find the physical uh, address, physical page address. And in disk, you need to find out where, which swap slot you, you use. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so, yeah. So this is the state of the virtual and physical pages. So now talk, uh, let's, let's talk about swapping. So the big two picture of swapping that there is two main interfaces, swap out and swap in, right? When do you need to swap out? 
So you, uh, when, whenever you want to allocate a physical page, uh, either for kernel or for user program, you scan your comap entry and find that you don't have any free physical pages. This is the point where you determine you need to swap out some page so that you can make space for the new allocation request. Um, later on, so swap may or may not have involves a disk I/O depending on which page you choose to swap. If you choose to swap a clean page, and like you, you don't have to do any disk I/O. If you choose to swap a, a dirty page, then you will have to write the page into disk. Then later on, because you are actually kicking out some page from memory to disk, and later on, if some user or some user uh, access that uh, page. You will have a TLB fault. At that point, you excuse me. You will have to bring that page from disk to memory again. So you need to do swap in. And notice that in the process, in order to swap in a page, you need to first allocate a page first, right? So that you can read the content into the physical page. But to be able to allocate a page, you may trigger another swap out because you may already have you may already run out of physical pages. So swap in may contain a swap out. And keep this in mind when you deal with the synchronization issues of swapping. So this is the big picture of the swapping part. And uh, so about swap out, the, well, of course, the most major part is actually write the page content to disk. The, uh, the question here is, first of all, where do you store all the swapped pages, right? Whether or not you want to swap, uh, store them in a file or in a dedicated swap disk. We'll talk about different options in the next slide. And also, when you choose a uh, swap victim and you swap out that page, how do you notify the page, the page owner, which is the process, that this page is no longer in memory? It's already being swapped, in, swapped to disk. And also, when you write, you cannot just write this page to some arbitrary disk place on disk. You need to remember where did you write to it. So later on, when you do swap in, you can find that page and bring up, bring back the content. So these are the questions of the swapping. So, uh, as I said in the previous slide, where can you uh, store all those swap swapped pages? Well, I I guess. After assignment two, you are pretty familiar with the file I/O stuff. So a more intuitive option would be um, to just open a file and write and write the page content to that file, right? Um, well, th it will work. You can use you can open some file and write to it, write the page content to it. But a more um, better option would be use a dedicated swap swap disk, meaning that. Um, you can open the disk as a raw uh, file, and uh, there will be no file system on it. You can store your page content there. In both ways, the, the way to use it is quite similar. The only difference is the file name uh, when, you, when you call VFS open. So if you um, open the configuration file of OS 161, You will find that there are two disk configurations, right? Disk one and disk two. You, uh, if you want to use a swap disk, actually, for each option, you need to make one of these values large to be able to set the swap space. Um, I think one sector is 512 bytes, and you times that by this sector number, you will get a total swap disk size. So we will notice that. Um, there are two uh, disks. One is used for the emulated file system called EMUF, EMUFS0. Another is not used. So you can use that um, by calling VFS open with this file name. So if you want to use a normal file to store all the swap pages, you can just substitute this to anything, to like whatever file name you choose. Or if you use this particular file name 
the the VFS open will know that you want to open a particular uh, a disk instead of a normal file. So it's up to you to choose which one to use. And it doesn't actually matter much of which one to use. You have to, so one thing you want to do is that you want to set this stack number to be very large so that you have enough swap, swap space. And that, that's it. So when you call VFS open, VFS open to get a swap file, you can use this, either this file name or any arbitrary file name you like. So this is where to store all those files. And inside that file, we all know that a file is a one-dimensional one byte storage, right? You can store 4K bytes here uh, in various locations. And when you do UIO, you can specify the offset, so you, know, you can virtually um, split the file into swap slot. One slot is 4K bytes. So you can number the slots as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, there, there is easy translation between the slot and the offset the slot ID and the offset. Uh, so the next step is how do you notify the owner so that the owner will know this patch is no longer in uh, memory. Um, well, to be able to notify the owner, first you need to figure out where, what the owners are. Right? Remember in the uh, first, slide, first recitation about uh, physical pages, we said in the call map, you may want to store the owner information. Their owner means address space and virtual address. So which, uh, which virtual address this page is being mapped to and where it's being mapped to. So this is the reason why you want to store that information at the first place. Right? If you don't, want to, don't do swapping, you don't need to store the owner information at all. Right, you don't need to know the reverse mapping of physical to virtual. This is the, the reason why you want that mapping. So when you scan your call map and you choose a victim, you want to find out where this physical page is being mapped to. Right? You want to find, figure out, find out the address space and also find out the virtual address. So once you have that information, you can um, uh, notify the owner by modify the owner's page table, right? Given the address space and the virtual address, you should, you should be able to locate that um, for page table entry for that virtual page. And then in that virtual pa uh, virt page table entry, you can set some flags maybe to indicate this page is no longer in, in memory, right? But first, you want to prevent access to the page because it's possible that that process is running in another CPU call, right? You have multiple CPU calls. So to be able to do that, you want to first shoot, out, shoot down the TLB entries for that virtual, uh, virtual address. Uh, once you do that, you will, you will uh, be sure that nobody can access that virtual page unless, triggering, unless it triggers a VM fault because there will be no TLB translation for that. Well, this, 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 this may be a little bit trickier to understand at first, but uh, when you do swapping, you will soon realize that, okay, I'm about to write out a page, and in the process, I might go to sleep because I'm doing disk I.O. In the process, how do I make sure that nobody else access this page? Because a page is 4K. For example, when you, when you are just in the middle of it, some other process may modify the content of the previous bytes, right? In that case, you have to redo the swapping again because you want to make sure the page content of the, of the, of the memory copy and this copy is identical. So you don't want anybody to write to that page while you do swapping. The way you do it is to um, shoot down the TLB entries for this virtual to physical mapping so that nobody will be able to access that page at all while you do swapping. And there, this involves some synchronization uh, here to coordinate the process that actually swap out the page and the process that, and the owner process that maybe may, may access this page. Any questions on this? I see a lot of 
confused eyes. So in high level, do you understand what I'm saying here? When you do swapping, you choose a victim. You clearly, clearly don't want any other process access this page while you do swapping, because swapping is not just happen instantaneously. It, it takes a while, right? It's involved disk I.O. here. In the, in the process, in that time duration, you don't want anybody else access this page. At least you don't want anybody else to write to this page. Otherwise, it will totally invalidate your purpose of swap out, right? To be able to do that, to be able to be sure that nobody will access this page while you do swapping, you have to do something before you swap, right? To set a lock or set a guard so that nobody else can, can access this page. This is conceptually, conceptually what you need to do. And uh, the, the, the implementation, well, you can figure out on your own. The, basically, the way to do it is that to shoot down the TLB entries for this page. So after you swap out, actually before you swap out, the, another thing you want to determine is that where do I write the page to, right? It's a swap file, so you need to decide the offset in that file that you want, you, you want to store the, uh, the page, right? And in order to do that, you need another map which is quite similar to a uh, call map, which you can call it a swap map. It's basically a mapping between address space plus virtual address to a swap slot. So it's a mapping like this. The key, it's a key value map. The key being the address space and the virtual address, the value being the swap slot. Right? Imagine you already have a such map. Whenever you want to swap out the page, you know the uh, address space, you know the virtual address from the call map, then given these two information, this structure will give you a, sw a sl swap slot, an index, or offset, right? So suppose this offset is two, then you know you should start from 8k, because the zero one is being used, and you should write it, write it from two, right? So you need to devise such a data structure that, first of all, given an address space and virtual address, give me a swap slot I can use. Right? And this structure should be, should be smart enough to, for example, the structure may already have a mapping for that virtual uh, address space plus virtual address to swap slot. It should be able to reuse that. So for example, the first time you swap out a page, it should allocate a slot for you, a new slot. Right? The second time you swap that page, it should still return you that slot. It doesn't make sense to you to use another swap slot. Right? You can you can reuse the the storage space that you used for the page before. So you need to come up with some um, data structure plus function that help you do the mapping, the mapping from address space plus virtual address to the slot index. And finally, swap in swap in. Um, it, Actually, if you have swap out, swapping is kind of easier. So first of all, you need to do swapping only in VM fault, right? You only need to swap in a page because somebody wants to access that page, and you swap out that page before. So inside uh, VM fault, you figure out, OK, you need swapping in the page. How? Well, you already have a page table entry for that, which means this page is being accessed before and is being allocated before. And you uh, query some flag in that page table entry that indicates this page is being swapped out. In that case, you know that some user process is trying to access a virtual page that is being previously swapped out. That's the time where you need to swap in that page. So first of all, you need to figure out well, the very first thing is that you want to allocate a physical page to be able to uh, hold the content of the swapped out page, right? So allocate a physical page, then get the content. Again, the question here is that how do you know which swap slot that page is? You know that by the data structure we mentioned in the last slide, given address space, which is the current address space, given the virtual address, give me the swap slot then I get the um, 
offset in that swap file, right? I read the content into the um, allocated physical page, and I set up the TLB, uh, set up the page table entry, set up the TLB, and I'm done with, the, with this VM fault, right? So you you only need to do swap in um, inside the VM fault. And another trick thing here is that swap in may trigger a swap out. So you be you should be careful when you do synchronizations. Okay. Um, any questions about swap out and swap in the process in general? Okay. So finally, let's look took a look at. Um, what changes do you need to make when you introduce swapping in your address space? So first of all, in AS copy. So previously, in AS copy, you just traverse all those page table entries and copy every physical page, right? When you, once you have swapping, now you may encounter some cases where this page is be, is is not in memory, is in disk. In that case, what do you do? Copy on disk, right? You allocate another swap slot for the new address spaces page, copy the content, well, read the content from disk to memory and from memory to disk, copy that. So when you do AS copy, you need not only copy the in-memory pages, you also need to copy the in-disk pages, swapped pages. That's the change you need to do in AS copy. And again, in AS destroy, you not only need to destroy all the, free all the pages in memory. You also free up all the swapped pages in disk. So that's the changes to address space of swapping. So this is basically what I have today. Any questions before we wrap this up? Yeah. Oh, you mean two address space and VA can map to the same swap slot? No, no. Copy, yeah. For that, you, so the thing is that you don't want to allocate any extra memories. When the, 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 the fact that you have some swap, uh, swap out page is the indication is that you, you are quite tight on the memories. And when you do AS copy, you don't want to allocate more. Of course, you can allocate all the pages in memory and copy it to memory. So later on, you may, want, you may end up swap that page again in disk. So it's up to you. You want to copy at this point, or you want to later on do the uh, write to disk part. It's either way. Right. Yeah, you're right. You don't have to copy, actually copy from disk to another swap slot. Yeah. All right then. Okay. Uh, this shall be the last of recitations. I'll, I'll, I'll pre I already pre covered pretty much everything about the address spaces and all that. So next week, I think I will do more office hours. Um, well, so keep. Stay tuned. I mean, I'm not sure yet. I have to discuss with Jeff, but uh, I think that will be the case.